What's up guys, David here from Unqualified Critics. Got an email today from arcade one up just as like many of you, I've purchased the products before, so I'm on their email list. They have a survey going right now asking the community for some advice or for input about presumably things they're considering doing. And I didn't think much of it, I just kind of entered it thinking, yeah, they're giving out a free cabinet, why not? But there's actually some really interesting stuff here I wanted to share with you because this is a really nice window into the things arcade one up are weighing as possibilities for future offerings i don't have the whole survey here most of it's just pretty standard stuff but i tried to pull out things that i think you guys will find interesting so we're going to look through this today i think it does give us a sneak peek into some directions arcade one up may be taking first questions about the arcade one up website and this has come a long way it started out as a very humble basic shopify site with only a few products you could buy. Originally, if you remember, you really couldn't even buy any of the cabinets from Arcade One Up. It was many months, like maybe six or, or almost a year, six months to a year before they started offering even the Street Fighter cabinet. That was the first one. And then over time, they've made more available. But it's not really been a big hub for the community which makes sense given Arcade One Up's history. They started as a product they would sell to retailers, and that's where they make their bread and butter. It doesn't make sense with that model for them to have to have a really robust online presence. But their shift here seems to be changing. And I think partly, I would imagine, inspired by companies like At Games with the Legends Ultimate, where they have kind of a more dynamic community oriented element, a little less retailer oriented and a little more consumer oriented. I suspect this is telling us Arcade One Up may be going in that direction. So let's look at the options. These are things they're asking, what would you like to see on their site? The first things may be the most interesting, high score tables. So how would they collect those high scores? Well, we know all the existing Arcade One Up cabinets are not online connected nba jam will be the first one we know the pinball cabinet will be wi-fi connected but initially just for firmware updates if they're talking about high score tables then that means they're also talking about adding high score tracking and uploading and assuming this isn't like the old game boy contest where you'd send in a photograph of your game boy with the high score on it assuming it's not something crazy low tech like that then this suggests to me that they are going to start messing around with high score uploads with the online connectivity, not just doing firmware updates. And I think very much that's a direction they need to go in. The Legends Ultimate, I think, has gotten a lot of mileage out of having these online scoreboards. It's a big part of their weekly updates to add more and more games to that. So it, I, I am guessing it's successful for them. It's a great way to drive community engagement. And I'm really hoping we see that from Arcade One Up. I don't know what regular competitions mean other than maybe score related if we look at the next option uh, game tips and tricks i think that's a great idea some of these older games actually don't have really good resources online for how to play them or details about how to play them especially some of the more obscure games so being a resource for that is smart modding trips and tips and tricks so that's one of the ones i did not vote for but i know i'm kind of an outlier here i don't really like the idea of modding the arcade one ups um, with non first party stuff but that's just me. A lot of you guys like to do that. Clearly, there's a huge YouTube audience for that. So it does make sense that Arcade One Up would embrace that. I'm kind of surprised to see that here because I've always assumed they have to walk this tightrope. They don't want to offend their licensors. But at the same time, if you want to embrace the community, you have to talk about modding to an extent. Uh, community tools for other players. Not sure what that means. And then, of course, an other. Let's move on and look at the next question. This is maybe the, the biggest thing here. Would you be interested in trading in old games for new games? I don't know how they would do that. That's kind of interesting. That would be a big undertaking. It's one thing to take a trade in for a book or a disc. You can even do that online. Amazon has online trade in programs. Of course, you could walk down to GameStop with you know, an Xbox or PlayStation game, whatever it might be. But to take an 80, 90 pound arcade cabinet and break it down and then trade it in, is interesting it wouldn't be easy this tells me that this is a big concern of theirs that they're going to saturate all of our basements or our game rooms and they need a way to keep this fresh they need a way to keep us buying new product i think that's already out there we have craigslist we have offer up there are these local options for someone to come by your house buy your product and they take it away and nobody has to ship it 
and that's probably going to continue to be the best way to do this. I voted yes, though, for my part. I'd like to see what they could come up with. I couldn't even fathom a guess because by the time you ship this thing, it's like imagine if you took an old Street Fighter cabinet that sells for like 100 bucks, you're going to be paying $50, $60 to ship it anyway. So it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. But if they can find a way to work this out with their shipping partners, I'm definitely all ears with whatever they can come in on. But again, I think the takeaway message with this question is they're rightfully concerned that each of us have an upper limit of how many cabinets we can actually buy. And they have to get us cycling old cabinets out. It's going to be an interesting challenge. I'm excited to see if and how they can solve it. Next one seems obvious to me. I'm surprised they haven't done it yet. Would you be interested in buying Arcade One Up merchandise? And then they call out t-shirts. Now they have the tin signs they sell at Walmart. I don't think those are that interesting. They have the light up signs that are kind of interesting, but I think they're a little bit pricey. So they've done a little bit on that front. Honestly, I don't think they've done enough to give us really differentiated game room signs or signage. T-shirts, on the other hand, retro gaming officially licensed T-shirts are hard to come by. Uh, there's a company called Homage that does NBA Jam T-shirts that are pretty cool. But even if you look at their offering, they only have a handful of video game brands that they license, mostly doing sports and stuff like that. It makes all the sense in the world. Arcade One Up, I think, should come with good quality cotton on something like this and bring us good t-shirts. But I think there's absolutely a market for a $30 a well-made vintage style gaming t-shirt, especially for a lot of these arcade titles that people are passionate about. They should absolutely do that, and I think they'd be successful. Next question gives us a little more insight about what exactly they're looking at. Stools, well, we know they're making stools. I think there's absolutely a market for stools. I think for 80 bucks, this should probably be a little higher quality, but is what it is. T-shirts, absolutely. Posters, absolutely. Signs. So I do think they should do signs, but that's a pretty big category. And I think the tin signs are kind of lame. Maybe they've sold well for them. I, I doubt it. For all the posts I've seen online with people's game rooms, I don't know that I've ever seen one of their tin signs up in someone's room. Neon signs, on the other hand, if you go on eBay, the market is flooded with knockoff neon signs, Atari signs, Nintendo, Sega. The, any of the ones I've ever seen, these are not official products, but a lot of them look really cool. There are a lot of people out there that make great neon stuff. 50, 60 bucks for an awesome one. I bought a neon sign that just says arcade, red and blue. I think I got it on eBay. Again, 60, 70 bucks. It looks really neat. Uh, looks a lot better than one of the light up signs that Arcade One Up sells. If they could work with these licensors and give us legitimate Atari neon signs, I think they could charge $100 for that. And I think there's a big market for it. And it goes along well with their product. You know, you go to Walmart, you buy a $400 cabinet. Arcade One Up's going to get, after it's all said and done and you consider their freight shipping, they're going to get $180 bucks of that. But then you go home, you go on their website, you participate in the community, you buy the signs. I mean, again, these are kind of the things maybe they should have been doing a long time ago. But better late than ever. I'm really glad they're looking at this. I'm curious what you guys think when we think about these questions. Are these items you'd be interested in buying? What about this trade-in program? Does, is there any way they could pull that off? Is this something you would participate in? Or do you feel like you're getting what you need already with Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, Craigslist, whatever, you name it. There are a lot of those community type tools. And we've all looked online and you know that arcade went up sell there. I sold one myself when I got rid of my Street Fighter cab because I bought the 12-in-1 Capcom. Sold it on Craigslist, I think, within a week, no problem. Let me know what you guys think. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit like. And if you like the channel, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to enable all notifications. Double check that you're still subscribed. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time.